Hey everyone, today we create realistic looking waves in Cinema 4D. Until a few years ago there was a plugin for Cinema 4D called Hot 4D that allowed users to create realistic ocean-like waves. The plugin was based on Jerry Tessendorf's paper Simulating Ocean Water, published in 2004, but it hasn't been updated since Cinema 4D R21. Without that plugin, creating realistic ocean waves in cinema can be a bit tricky. The first and the most obvious thing to do is to create a plane and apply a material with a displacement map connected to a maxon noise. You can layer different noises with different scales and animation speeds on top of each other, and you may find a combination that works. I also found this animated normal map online, which you can use to simulate small ripple effects. If you need calm water, this approach is probably more than enough to get great results. I tried to find a combination of noises to get taller or rougher believable waves, and honestly, I couldn't. I don't think this is actually achievable in Cinema 4D at all. Not without using third-party paid plugins such as RealFlow or XParticles. Luckily, this is incredibly easy to do in another software, Blender. Now, if you really don't want to open Blender and you only need the displacement map, you can download it on Gamrod for free and skip this part of the video. You can find the link in the description. But I do believe it's worth doing this yourself to be able to control not just the water height, but physical properties of the ocean, such as wind, water depth, temperature, etc. So download Blender and open it. It takes a minute and it's free. Get rid of the default cube, the camera and the light. Add mesh plane. Then go to the modifier properties, add modifier, ocean. Set the resolution to something like 20, then the wave scale to 5. Higher values of resolution will slow down the calculation. If you now press play, nothing happens, and that is because the time value is not animated. So add a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline with a value of 1. Then go to the end and add another keyframe with a value of 10. If you now press play, you'll notice there is not a linear interpolation between the keyframes. So select the two keyframes, right click, interpolation, mode, linear. Now press play and take a minute to reflect on how much you're paying max on a year. I mean, just look at this, it's beautiful. Play around with the parameters of depth, size, choppiness and wind velocity until you get a result that you like. Use alignment to create aligned waves that follow a specific direction. Once you're happy, open the bake section, choose a path and a frame range. I'm happy with 250 frames. Keep in mind that the vector displacement map's size depends on the render resolution. With the resolution of 20 that we set initially, the map will be 400 by 400 pixel, which is not enough. So bring the resolution up to 40 to get a 1600 pixel square map. Blender will now bake the simulation as an EXR sequence with 32 bit per channel. This is great because it contains much more color data compared to a standard PNG which for a displacement map matters. You'll notice that the baked map is not just a grayscale height map, but a vector RGB displacement map, with information not just to extrude the Y axis, but also the X and the Z axis. Specifically, the red correspond to X displacement, the green to Y, and the blue to Z. The colors of the X, Y, Z axis are different between Cinema 4D and Blender. You can see this by comparing the axis icon on both softwares in the viewport. However, when bringing the map into Cinema, there is no need to flip any of these channels. Now, back in Cinema 4D. I'm rendering this out with Redshift, but you can do the same with a node material in Cinema 4D. Then create a plane and a Redshift material. Load in the first frame of the displacement, connect it to a displacement node and to the output. Check that the displacement is set to vector and the space type to object. Apply the material to the plane, as well as a Redshift tag. In the Geometry tab, enable the tessellation and the displacement. If you now skip through the frames, you'll notice that the displacement is not animated. To fix this, go to the Image node, Animation, Simple, click Detect Frames and check that the frame rate matches that of the scene. I'm creating a dome light and an area light to be able to see what I'm doing better. I'm also making the plane 10 times bigger. On the Material tag, lower the Tiling UV percentage to 10. You don't necessarily need crazy numbers in the segments of the plane. If the screen space adaptive check is turned on, Redshift will subdivide the vertices based on how much screen space they occupy. And with the default maximum subdivision setting of 6, you're telling Redshift that it can subdivide one single polygon up to 6 times, which will create about 4000 polygons from just one which is insane. This is different from the sub-polygon Cinema 4D default materials, which will simply divide every polygon regardless of how far away they are from the camera. 
So for this scene, 100 by 100 segments on the plane is enough for the ocean. Now, to fix the repeating pattern on the water, create a new color layer node. Connect the image map to the color of the base layer and the result to the displacement. Duplicate the texture map and connect it to layer 1. Change the rotation and scale parameters of the second map. We'll now create a black and white Maxon noise to blend the two layers. You can solo the noise to see what you're doing. I'm using a default noise with three octaves and an overall scale of a thousand. If for some reason you cannot see the updated displacement after soloing the Maxon noise, just refresh the IPR. Adjust the white value of the noise so that the top layer won't be too prominent and maybe add a third layer to break up the tiling even more. Remember to change the rotation of the texture map and the seed of the noise for every new layer. Here I'm just adjusting the white values of the two noises. This is a quick render of how the displacement should behave. In the Redshift material I'm going to use the water preset. It's completely transparent, so something that you can do to fix this is to change the color of the refraction tab. Alternatively, you can create a maximum noise with a couple of cool colors and plug that into the refraction color setting. This way you can give the water a bit more variation. I like this method, but actually I prefer to keep the refraction color completely white and create a kind of seabed underneath. So, duplicate the plane, get rid of the redshift tag, move the plane down a bit, create a new material and apply it to the new plane. Get rid of the reflection, create a maximum noise with a couple of cool colors, fix the scale. Also, I'm actually going to give the water material a bit of a darker color refraction because I think it looks better. You can experiment with different HDRIs and maybe add a plane with a specific sky to use as a backdrop. Also, because the water is transparent and not just a reflective surface, you can have objects getting into the water. And this is basically it. This is my first tutorial, so I hope you found this useful and have a good day.